Hi boys and girls, welcome back. We're going to continue talking about David today. Well, during the time that David was hiding from Saul, David and his men had to travel from place to place. And one time they were hiding out in the wilderness, helping a man named Nabal. Nabal was a very rich man. He owned 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. He allowed the sheep and goats to graze in the wilderness area far from his home. His servants and shepherds would take care of the sheep and keep them from wandering away. But being so far away from home was dangerous. These often tried to hurt the shepherds and steal the sheep. Sometimes wild animals would try to kill some of the lambs. David and his men helped protect Nabal's sheep and shepherds. David had an army of 600 men. Wow, that's a lot of men, isn't it? He had a lot of guys that were friends of his. 600 men, that's a lot. They camped around Nabal's flocks, and they also helped to protect them so that nothing could harm them. Although Nabal was very rich, he wasn't a nice man. He wasn't a very kind man. He was mean and he was selfish, and he was dishonest. His wife, however, not like Nabal, his wife's name was Abigail. Abigail. The Bible tells us she was beautiful, she was kind, and she was intelligent. Once a year, Nabal's shepherds would bring the sheep back to Nabal's home to be sheared. Do you know what that means? They got a haircut. Once a year, they would bring them back to get a haircut. The sheep would be taken, then be taken back to pasture. Well, sheep shearing time was a big event in Bible times. The owner of the sheep would hire extra help and because you needed a lot of men to cut the sheep's hair. He would then prepare a big barbecue to feed all the workers. Well... While Nabal was preparing the yearly feast, David sent ten of his men to Nabal's house. They politely greeted him. I'm going to turn you to the board so you can see what I'm talking about. So you see Nabal? There's Nabal, and he sent his men to greet them, him. And they politely said, While your shepherds have lived among us, we have taken care of them and your flocks. Now we hear that you are having a feast, and we would like to be a part of it. We would be glad to any food that you could spare that you could give us. Do you think that would be a fair trade, boys and girls? Since the men had helped take care of Nabal's flocks, do you think that would be a fair trade? Yeah, I think so. Very much so. That's the least he could do. Well, Nabal didn't think it was a good idea. He scowled at the messengers. Who does David think he is? He grumbled. I've never heard of him. When David heard Nabal's reply, he was furious. Buckle on your swords, he ordered. We will soon show Nabal who David is. And he took 400 men and up the hill they began to march to Nabal's house. Meanwhile, at Nabal's home, one of his servants told Abigail what had happened. Abigail was very upset that David's men had been treated so rudely. As rich as her husband was, he should have been willing to share his food with David's men. Now David was coming up the hill to kill him. There was only one way for Abigail to change David's mind and save a lot of people from a sure death. Quickly, she and her servants loaded up several donkeys with meat, bread, corn, raisins, and figs, and down the hill she headed to meet David and his friends. So Nabal had been very mean to David and his friends, and he wasn't going to let them have anything to eat, was he? After everything they had done for Nabal and his shepherd men, he wasn't very nice, was he, boys and girls? Nope. Well, here's Miss Abigail. See Miss Abigail? And here's David. 
she's going to go to talk to him because what's David about to do with his men? Yep, he's about to go kill her husband, isn't he? Because he was so ugly after everything David and his men had done for her. Well, when the two, two sides met, Abigail jumped off her donkey and she greeted David. She apologized for Nabal, her husband's rude behavior, and begged David to forgive him. David was delighted by Abigail's tactful words. He could tell she was a very smart woman. He accepted her apology and her gift of food. David ordered her, his men to turn around and to head back to their camp. When Abigail arrived, by, arrived back home, she found her husband had thrown a big party. She, t she didn't even tell him anything about her meeting up with David until the next morning. And when at last she told him what had happened, Nabal had a stroke. And he lay paralyzed for several days. And then he died. David heard the news of Nabal's death. And he sent messengers to Abigail's home. Can you guess what message David might have sent to Abigail? The message was, Will you be my wife? You're such a kind, good woman. Will you be my wife? Well, do you think Abigail accepted David's proposal? She did. She did. She left with David's servants, and when she arrived at the camp, they were married. David and Abigail spent many happy years together. You know what, boys and girls? When you're kind and you're tactful and you're courteous, it's always appreciated and it will go a long, long ways. Jesus teaches us to be that way too, to be kind, kind-hearted, even when others treat us mean and ugly and bad, you know? You'll kill them with kindness. And that's kind of what happened to Nabal. Yeah. Abigail did the right thing. God took care of Abigail and God took care of Nabal. Yep, you don't mistreat people. You may get away with it for a while, but you don't get away with it for very long. God always takes care of his people. Always takes care of his people. There's not one time in the whole Bible where when his people repented, turned from their wickedness, and sought God, he rescues them. He'll do it today, too. But his people have to repent. But let's always be kind. Let's always be kind, even to the people that are mean and ugly and have the devil in them because you don't know maybe you might be the one person that makes them say you know what I need to know this Jesus I sure would like to be kind like that I would like to have a heart that loves people like that that's what Jesus wants us to do that's what he did so let's just always remember it pays to be kind okay all right, boys and girls, that's today's story. So we'll have a word of prayer, and I'll let you go and enjoy this day. Okay? This is a great day because you know why? The Lord has made it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Okay, boys and girls, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for another great story about David. What a, a mighty man he was, Father. Even when people tried to kill him like Saul, even when people were mean to him like Nabal, he always did the right thing, and he was always kind. He had your heart, didn't he, God? You gave him your heart. And so, Lord, we cry out to you to give us your heart. Create in us a clean heart, oh God, just like you did in David. Help us to be kind. Help us to be loving, even when others are not that way. Help us to always love, just like you. 
And we thank you and we praise you again for this wonderful story about David and all the stories we have about him and all of the stories in your precious holy book, the Bible. And so, Lord, just be with each boy and girl and man and woman as they go out today and remember, remember this story about David. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that story, the story about brave, beautiful Abigail and the warrior king, David. Okay, I'm going to let you go, and you have a great day. And remember, Miss Pam loves you, but God, mm, 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 he loves you so, so much more. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.